Hey you guys, um, I thought I'd try to do this as a video because I think it might be the easiest way for you to learn, but uh, so hopefully it's helpful. Um, one thing I want to say is just keep in mind that you really, really, really should try to do these on your own as we go, which means you should pause the video whenever you need to and think about the problems as much as possible, relating them to the definitions I gave you, um, and convince yourself that they match with the definition. Um, and also, don't be afraid to build a model, especially at first. Okay, so again, here what we're trying to do is we're just trying to figure out the correct relationship between the following compounds, um, and here are our choices. Okay, so how I'd think about this is I'd say, right away I can see that there's some kind of stereoisomer because there's some difference in the way they're oriented in 3D space. Okay, so what I mean by that is this one is trans and that one is cis, so uh, it's bent in a different way. Okay, I wouldn't, um, well once, I, once I've decided that, I can see right away that they're either, sorry, an enantiomer or a diastereomer. Okay, because these are the only two categories that are stereoisomers. Now, once I do that, I just have to decide between the two. But it might be worthwhile right now to go through each of the other ones and convince yourself why they don't match. Okay, so probably the easiest thing is superimposable without bond rotation. I can quickly see if I take this guy, move it over there, they're not going to match up completely, okay, since it's bent on the double bond. All right, so definitely not superimposable. I'll cross that out. Um, are they a constitutional isomer? Again, that's pretty easy to see. No, everything is attached to uh, each other thing in the same way between the two. Okay, so it's not like this group is right here on this compound. Okay, so that's not right. They're not conformational isomers because that would be, mean I could just rotate a bond and make them match up. All right, you might think, oh, I could rotate around that bond, and then they would match up. If I could, they would but I can't because it's a double bond. That bond is not free to rotate, so that's not acceptable. All right, um, the last thing here is meso compound. Okay, keep in mind that means it's uh, an achiral compound that still has a stereocenter. All right, so neither of these have a stereocenter, so that doesn't work. Um, and right away, since we can see that they can't possibly match up with each other, they're not different conformations and not superimposable, that also means they can't be meso. Okay, so that's how we get back to these two, enantiomers, diastereomers. But if this were on a test, hopefully you'd realize right away it's one of the two. And then we simply say, okay, what's the difference between the two? If they're enantiomers, that would mean that they're mirror images um, of each other, okay? And that should be pretty obvious that they're not, but just for example, if I were to draw the mirror image of this guy, it would look like that roughly, which clearly is not the same these two are not the same thing, okay? So they're not mirror images of each other, which means that they're diastereomers. So this is the combination we want. Um, all right, so just remember, anything that's not an enantiomer but is still a stereo uh, isomer, that would be a diastereomer. So just because we've changed this double bond, that means it's a diastereomer. Okay, here's another example, uh, similar to the last one, because I've got different combinations of the uh, double bonds. All right, so again, trans and cis versions. But this time I've added in a stereocenter. I'll highlight those in yellow. So each compound has a stereocenter. It's a stereocenter because there's one, two, three, four different things bonded to that carbon. Okay. Um, so since there's a stereocenter and the double bond, they're stereoisomers of each other, unless I got sneaky and made a repeat of one of them, okay? But, well, I better check to make sure I didn't do that, okay? So if I look at the first one, either of the ones that are cis have to be different right away, and then if I look at its trans version, I can see I did change the stereocenter before I had the alcohol in the back, now it's in the front over here on the third version. Okay, I'll do the same analysis with the cis guy. All right, so the alcohol's in the front, alcohol's in the back. They're not the same compound. They're not superimposable. 
Okay, so they are stereoisomers of each other. Everyone is a stereoisomer of every other one. So that means the only kinds of combinations are going to be enantiomers and diastereomers. Now what we're going to do is let's connect them. If they're enantiomers, I'll connect them in yellow. If they're diastereomers, I'll connect them in pink. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Uh, if it's if we want to find it's enantiomer, we know that's just the mirror image of the compound. And one thing to notice is, if I were to draw that mirror image, it would still have the trans double bond. So I can quickly show you that. Just if I draw the carbon backbone, ignoring the stereocenter, here is the double bond. That's the mirror image for the carbons. Okay, It's still trans, so the trans one over here has to be its enantiomer. Okay. So just to clarify, uh, we didn't change the EZ label, but we changed the RS label for the stereocenter. That makes them enantiomers. Okay, let's go over to the next one. This one's the cis version. Here's the other cis version. We changed the stereocenter, uh, but not the cis trans double bond. That makes them enantiomers. Okay, and then everything else you don't really have to think if you don't want to, uh, because you know all the other combinations have to be diastereomers. But because we always want to think about it, let's just review that real quick. Um, we know a diastereomer is anything that's a stereoisomer that's not its enantiomer. So since we didn't draw the yellow connection between the first two, okay, that means they're not enantiomers, so they have to be diastereomers. And that's just because we, as soon as we change that double bond from trans to cis, um, that means they can't possibly be mirror images of each other. But they're still chiral, okay, so that makes them diastereomers. Alright, and then we can just fill in the rest of the combinations for this guy. Uh, we already found it's enantiomer. Here's the two diastereomers. And then for the third one, there's one diastereomer. Um, just to unclutter, we had already labeled that one, so really it was just... That's all that was left. Okay, if we go to the third one, we've got one of its diastereomers. It's an antiomer. So the other diastereomer is the one with the other cis double bond. And then for the fourth one, we already have all the labels. So this is all the different combinations.